A custom water cooling loop is one of the most beautiful aspects, if not the most beautiful aspect of any custom gaming PC. Water cooling is where a PC goes from being a piece of equipment to a work of art. While only my CPU is water cooled, I could not be happier with this PC. It's beautiful. It's one of a kind. And above all else, it performs exceedingly well. Introducing Project Kaiba. Project Kaiba is a PC inspired by Seto Kaiba and his blue eyes white dragon. And yes, I'm talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. The overall color scheme is white and blue with black accents. The specs for the system are the AMD Ryzen 5800X, the NVIDIA RTX 3070 Founders Edition, the ASUS ROG Strix X570e Gaming Motherboard, Corsair Vengeance RAM, and pretty much everything else is also Corsair, such as the CPU block, the pump res combo, the fans, the case, and even the radiator are all Corsair. In October of 2019, I built my first ever dedicated gaming PC. Essentially, it was the foundation for the PC that you see today. A lot of the parts are the same parts that you see today, such as the case, the fans, the hard drives, and the custom cable extensions. Initially, I wanted an i9 9900K and a 2080 Ti, and of course, everything had to be water-cooled. But this proved to be far too ambitious as well as too expensive. So ultimately, I saved some money and I ended up with an AMD Ryzen 3800X and an AMD Radeon 5700 XT. I ultimately liquid cooled my CPU using an AIO from Corsair and I air cooled my GPU using its factory triple fan design. Fast forward exactly one year later to October 2020 and the NVIDIA RTX 3070 releases and I was actually fortunate enough to get my hands on one. I was able to go to the Best Buy website, buy it day one at MSRP and a few days later it came in the mail on Halloween day. Best Halloween Ever. A few months later in February 2021, I decided I had an itch that I finally needed to scratch. It was time to do my first ever custom water cooling loop. So I called up my buddy John, you may know him as Supercharger from our Power of PC podcast, and I said, hey man, it's finally time. Let's do a custom loop. And he said, all right. He drove down, I bought all the parts, and we spent an entire weekend putting it together. Just before doing the custom loop, I decided I needed to upgrade my CPU from the 3800X to the AMD Ryzen 5800X. My thought process was I'm about to lock this thing down on a custom water cooling loop. It's gonna have a water block on it. If I need to change anything for any reason, it's not going to be easy. So I might as well go ahead and get one final final upgrade in before making this a permanent situation for quite a long time. So I went ahead and upgraded to the AMD Ryzen 5800X. So now the only issue is the GPU. You're probably wondering how come I didn't water cool my GPU and that's a fair question. And the answer is very simple. I could not find a water block for my GPU at the time of buying all the other water cooling components. A few days before the water cooling project, EK Water Blocks actually released a custom water block for the RTX 3070 Founders Edition. However, at this point in time, I had no guarantee that it would actually arrive in time. And my buddy John had already taken time off from work to come down and help me out with this project. So I really didn't want to risk it. Furthermore, even if I could get it in time, it would be the only component inside of my system that would not be Corsair. It wouldn't match anything and I could not control it through IQ. I'm holding out hope that Corsair will actually release a water block for the RTX 3070 Founders Edition. At the time of filming, no water block exists, but I'm hoping that it's coming soon. But even though I couldn't water cool my GPU, I still wanted to spice it up a little bit and do a couple of things to make it pop a little bit more. I went out and I bought a Gen 4 PCIe riser cable and I was able to vertically mount my GPU. I decided to take apart the GPU and paint the chassis white. Now this actually hurt me quite a lot. I did not want to take apart the GPU. I was so scared of messing something up. And furthermore, the 3070 Founders Edition is just so beautiful. If you saw my unboxing video, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. However, even though it's very beautiful, the color did not match anything in my build and I wanted my build to be as coherent as it could possibly be. So I went over to the Gamers Nexus RTX 3070 breakdown video. I watched how he did it. I took apart my GPU. I painted the chassis white. I did it live on my Twitch channel. I put it back together and I got to be honest with you I do not regret my decision at all this card looks better than it ever has before and it goes so well with my overall PC aesthetic I am very happy with the way 
this turned out. Now, speaking of painting, I actually painted a couple of other components inside of the PC as well. I did some of the back plates and the thumb screws as well as some of the heat sinks on the motherboard. I wanted to make as many components white as I possibly could to make all the other accents pop just a little bit more. I feel like I painted as much as I possibly could within reason. I feel like anything additional would just simply risk the overall integrity of my components and I did not want to do that. Lastly, let's talk about the water cooling loop itself. Ultimately, we came up and out the pump into a 90 degree bend. From there, we had to do another 90 degree bend into the CPU. We tried this multiple times and we just couldn't get it right. Finally, we just decided to use a 90 degree fitting. This made it so much easier. And honestly, I'm not even ashamed that I had to do it. So uh, yeah, don't, don't at me. I'm, I'm still pretty happy with the way this looks and how it turned out. From there, we came out of the CPU block and we did another 90 degree bend into the radiator. Lastly, we used the tiniest piece of tubing possible and come out of the radiator and back into the pump. This was by far the hardest part of the loop. I think it took us almost two hours to get this last piece to fit just right. Finally, we filled the loop and let me just tell you, watching a loop fill for the very first time is one of the most satisfying things to watch. I highly recommend it. We did have one fitting a little too loose and so we did have some leaks, but it was totally fine. This is why we use paper towels and we removed as many PC components as possible before filling the loop. I'm happy to report that nothing was damaged. It took about four to five days for all the air bubbles to disappear from the loop but now the loop is completely done. So what's next? Well, if Corsair releases a water block for the 3070 Founders Edition, I will happily buy it and water cool my GPU and make another video on it. But until then, I plan to just play a lot of games and make a lot of YouTube videos. Oh, and by the way, speaking of YouTube videos, I have two more water cooling videos planned. We're gonna do a water cooling video talking about tips and tricks for your very first water cooling build. And I'm also gonna follow it up with another video talking about should you water cool your PC Yes or no, I'm gonna ask and answer the question and talk about why and why not. So if you're interested in watching one of those videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can check them out when they release. And if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and hit that like button. It goes a long way in helping me out. And until next time, E Rock out. Oh my goodness. Don't teabag me, dude. Don't teabag me. All right. Where... <laughs> All right, I have to start laughing a little bit. <laughs> Top blue. Yeah! Got him! Oh, I stuck him! Oh.